Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, That Creepy Reading, and today I'm doing some crappy bosses. Apparently enough of you requested that I change the name, so I'm gonna be changing the name. It is now Crappy Bosses. I hope you enjoy that. Why don't we begin our first shitty adventure to Sonic the Cursed Adventure. As far as I can tell, it seems to be a ripoff of... Well, everyone's favorite story, Squidward Suicide. With that being said, let's begin. I admit, I didn't really enjoy working at 4Kids Entertainment. Especially when a young company started dubbing the Sonic X anime series. I have to admit, the voices were okay in my opinion, but the company had zero monetary value on censoring every single detail. I hated doing that, especially to my favorite Sega character of all time. So when we were um, just starting to dubbing on the series, I couldn't take the negative comments on what the fans had to speculate on 4Kids censorship. And I have to admit, they do have a point. We replaced the gun shooting sound effects with lasers, pew pew right when we were in the middle of dubbing season two. <sighs> so from that point on, I decided to quit 4Kids TV and well, just start and find a new job. I am aware about how all creepypastas go out. It's all the same. Find a weird game at a flea market. When you play it, weird story crap happens. It never changes, but I digress. I decided to go to a Burger King before I tried to find a new job. I needed to eat something anyway. After I ordered some food, I sat down at an empty table near the window. So I saw something next to me that caught my eye. I picked it up and to my surprise, it was Sonic Adventure, the Dreamcast game. The CD case looked pretty legit and the game manual and CD were in there and everything. Although, for some reason, the picture of Sonic looked as if it was printed from a regular computer printer. I did not seem to care as long as it played okay. Even though I am an adult, I still love playing video games, especially with my 9 year old daughter. But I didn't even have a Dreamcast system to play this game on. After I finished eating, I decided to go for some good old fashioned nostalgia and find a Dreamcast. I looked around my local game stores, but there was no system available. I kept forgetting that they don't usually sell these anymore, considering that when they came out, not many of them did sell. When I got home, my daughter Nellie wasn't home yet, and I didn't want to disappoint her with a game that can't be played. So I decided to find to well decided to find a Dreamcast on eBay. After searching, I managed to find a pretty good used system for around $45, and I purchased it. And uh, <laughs> it said it won't come for about a week or two. While I was sitting on the living room, I looked at the Sonic Adventure case, and I opened it up again, and then I looked at the back of the CD. It looked absolutely perfect. No scratches, no smudge marks, no nothing. It was as if it was fresh from the factory. But <sighs> there was something else weird. Where this CD was in its case, there was a tiny sticky note. It was written in all Japanese, and I do admit I do understand a few Japanese sentences, but not really a lot. I tried to use Google to translate, and... Here's what I could make out. This is his last quest. Play. <laughs> and your loved ones will suffer too. Okay, I'm a dad creeped out. A couple weeks had passed and the Dreamcast system finally arrived at my house. I recently got a new job too and I didn't really want to show Nelly the game just yet. I wanted it to be um <laughs> a surprise for when she finally comes home from school. After Nelly went on the school bus, I decided to try out the Sonic game and make sure it would play just all right. No, oh, god damn. I inserted the disc in the game and I decided to turn it on. The Dreamcast logo looked at looked so new to me. 
Even though it was an old system. The very cool 3D Sonic intro for Sonic Adventure played, and I was pretty excited to try it out myself. I saw that there was a new save file on it, save file 1. When I moved to save file 2 to start a new game, the game wouldn't let me. I tried pressing the button to select a new game, but it still sadly would not respond. I thought the game must have been glitched, even though it looked so new to me. I decided to try out the previous save file that was left on there. The screen faded out, and when it faded in, it looked like the city that you started out in. Except, everything was dark. The sky looked red and black, and there were no people outside, nor any music. The camera zoomed in on Sonic, alone on the street. He didn't say anything at all. He looked up at the sky. Just then, the camera switched to the backside of Sonic. I figured I was able to control him now. And to be honest, I was right and I made Sonic run in the silent black morbid town. Silent. Black. Morbid. Ha. Fuck it. Jumping, running, and other such stuff. There was no items to collect, nor any rings either. As I continued running, Sonic stopped, and I guess it must have been in our cutscene or something. The camera turned back to Sonic, and for some reason, he looks scared. As if he knows what's going to come out and attack him. I don't recall being that scared. I was beginning to think that this may have been a hacked game or something like that. but. It looked too detailed to be hacked, even though I have had heard that it's possible to pirate Dreamcast CDs. <sighs> it switched back to gameplay, and I was able to control Sonic again. Sonic stopped at the town hall, must be another cutscene. Sonic looked up at the black and red sky again, still no talking. Just then, it started raining hard over him. Just then, some pounding of heavy metal music began to play, which made my heart jump due to the sudden loud noise. Sonic turned around and saw Eggman in his usual ship, saying stuff like, I'll destroy you, Sonic! Or something like that. I always enjoyed beating Eggman in other classic Sonic games. Maybe I can beat him in this game as well. But right when I was about to attack, I realized I had absolutely no rings on me. Eggman attacked, Sonic fell to the ground, and I lost a life. The screen faded out, this time. Instead of starting the battle over again, it was another cutscene. Sonic started, well, was panting hard this time as he was kneeling to the ground. Eggman pressed a button, out of the blue, Metal Sonic appeared in out of thin air. I specifically knew Metal Sonic was not supposed to be in the Sonic X series or any of the Sonic Adventure games. At least, I think. I didn't play most of the other Sonic games, but I don't know, maybe I just don't really remember. Maybe this game really was hacked. No dip. The music begun to become lower and more morbid. Keyword there, morbid. As Sonic, oh, Metal Sonic approached Sonic, who was trying to get up. As soon as Metal Sonic stopped right in front of Sonic, the music immediately stopped. Dead silence. As the only sound you could hear was the sound of rain pouring hard. I was beginning to question how Sonic was able to move in the rain because he was a robot, like robots must rust in the water. Sonic looked up, and he was horrified to see Metal. He quickly got up and made a run for it, as the heavy metal music began to play again. The screen faded out, and it was back to gameplay. I had no idea what I was supposed to do, so I just kept on running all around town. My guess was maybe that I was just supposed to avoid Metal. And that's what I did the entire time, running around, jumping, and trying to avoid Metal. But see, no matter how fast I was, Metal would always make up time. Whenever Metal attacked, Sonic fell to the ground, and I was quickly losing all of my lives. It wasn't until long until I finally lost all my lives. I was expecting to see a game over screen, but what I saw was horrifying. 
It, it showed a realistic sketch animation of Metal beating the shit out of Sonic. It was like an unfinished deleted scene. Metal kicks Sonic right in the face, and I, I, I saw touches of black on Sonic's face. It must have been Sonic's blood after such a beating. After Metal knocked Sonic to the ground once more, he put his foot over Sonic's face. The scene, scene cut to black, and you could hear a loud... I was shaking like a dog in fear. Just then, some words in Japanese appeared on the screen. It was the exact same message I found in that sticky note. This is his last quest. Play, and your loved ones will suffer too. <sighs> After a few more seconds of dead silence, uh, of watching the screen, the text faded out, and it showed what, to look, well, what looks like Metal Sonic's eyes up close on the screen. And then, I have to admit, this was giving the, the heebie-jeebies. The, the screen stayed like that, and no matter what button I pressed, the game would not respond at all. Thankfully, the game turned on when I unplugged it. The game turned off when I unplugged it from the wall. I don't understand this. Metal Sonic was not supposed to be in the Sonic Adventure series, not to my knowledge, that is. Maybe some sicko at Sega wanted to make this because he didn't like the new Sonic games. I'll never know, and quite honestly, no one will. I took the CD out of the Dreamcast, and I noticed something that made my heart jump. Back of the disc was damaged, and all scratched up. It was as if it was like that the entire time. When I looked closer at the scratches on the disc, I noticed that it formed some words I was able to make up. They were small, but I was able to read them. You, and your loved ones, shall suffer. I, I don't know what the heck is going on, and believe me, I don't believe in curses or anything like that, but that's all changed. After a few minutes of trying to regain myself, I received a phone call and answered it. It was, she, it was my teacher, well, it was the teacher from my daughter's school. She told me that Nelly was in trouble and told me to come in as soon as possible. I quickly got in my car and went off to her school. When I got there, the teacher escorted her to the nurse's office. I saw Nelly lying on the nurse's stool. I tried to shake her awake, but she didn't respond. Her eyes locked as if she was staring at something in the distance. Her nose was all bloody too. I asked the teacher what happened, but she told me that Nelly was doing her work in class at around 8.15. She heard flailing on the floor, screaming and yelling as if someone was attacking her. <sighs> she then fell off the ground, her nose bleeding heavily. I was quite shocked because that's the exact time when I started playing the game after Nelly left school. Maybe the disc I found is really cursed and now it affected me. I lost my daughter, and if I tell people about my experience and how my precious Nelly lost her life because of this CD, they'll think that I lost my mind. Ugh. Moving on to story number two. I remember back when I was a kid and me and my friends always played Sonic Adventure 2 Battle on my GameCube. We usually play at my house, and quite honestly, I don't remember if my friends even had their own copies or not. We'd spend countless hours trying to get an A rank on stages, even though, at the time, none of us could even get an A rank on Cityscape. Or we'd spend time messing around in a Chow garden, trying to discover new Chow egg colors. It was my memories of those things that made me want to go find a copy and start playing it again, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Now, being your ordinary teenager, this is not much of a problem, as I decided to emulate it. I decided that maybe I could try out some cheat codes on my emulator, or f maybe two. <laughs> <sighs> and maybe I could unlock some secret themes and chows that I was never able to get in the normal game. After downloading an emulator and ISO, I don't honestly remember the emulator or... But honestly, how many out there could there be, and I don't remember the site where I got the game files. Probably Pirate Bay or something. I started browsing the web for cheating devices and codes, and similar to such things. I found one code that seemed to be interesting to me. I'd browsed a lot of cheat websites on that day, so who knows which one I had seen. But it claimed to let me play recently discovered testing stages and beta stages that use the test items within the game code. 
After all my many years of owning and knowing about the game, I had never used this to test, well, I had only ever heard of this test screen once. With certain cheats or glitches, you could reach it within Sonic, and it seemed to have a gr involve a grind rail or some other stuff that you needed to toy with. There's a video that you can see if you want to go find them. I decided that I would just see what this test and beta stage looked like. I entered in the cheat, and it loaded up the game. The game didn't start normally, though, with the opening theme, and then the- sorry. It didn't start normally with an opening theme, and then options. It just went right to the stage, loading the screen. The screen looked like, well, the Sonic stage loading screens, in a weird color scheme. And then it said, Mission! Test the bounce bracelet. For those of you who don't know, usually a mission is accompanied by a number to tell you what mission you're doing for what stage. For example, city, escape, first mission, escape from the military parachute, pursuit. But this was clearly different. I, I, there was no header to tell you what level or mission number. When the stage loaded, the background was all black, and Sonic was on a gray cement platform, a texture probably found somewhere like a metal harbor from the final game. The only other thing on the platform was a power-up, the bounce bracelet. After collecting the item, I went to the edge of the platform and bounced off, and then landed on a platform underneath. With a bounce, I should have, well, underneath with a bounce. I did this several times before reaching the platform with a gold ring. After completing the level, it simply loaded the same level over and over and over again. Now, I was getting a little pissed, and now that I knew there was indeed these tasks possibly promised to be beta stages, but the cheat only let me access this one. I restarted the game and loaded it again to see if it would work better, maybe even a different one. This time, it loaded as normally would, opening and all. I started the hero story when something strange happened. Usually, if you started one of the stories and came back later, dis well, came back later, a screen where a character talks about what's happening the last time you played appears. But I don't remember that happening. When you first choose a story, well, but the one I got anyway, this specific one seemed to be made up of lines said by both Sonic and Knuckles from within the final game, though. The background is showed, it should be only Sonic speaking. It said, Finally decided to show up, eh? I I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. Eggman really turned into a big time villain. I, I can't go home to a planet as cool as and blue as me. That was all. The first line is something Sonic says when he encounters the game's first hero, side boss. The second line was something I remember him usually saying in scenes like this. Eggman has really turned into a big time villain, is a mixed one of, well, of one of the times Sonic says his lines in late game, and then you, you know, from, you really turned into a big time villain doctor, I can't is taken when Knuckles cannot dig into a wall, and go home, this planet isn't as cool as me, is a segment from one of the last lines Sonic says in the game. As you would imagine, this damn story is really hard to fucking read. As you would imagine, the sound mixing for these lines was terrible, and whoever did this clearly inserted those lines and made no attempt to smooth them together and make them spoke properly. I thought that maybe the creators used this as a placeholder for Sonic, and well, this was only for when he went to the Space Colony arc before recording and actually doing dialogue for it. But then I wondered why the game would start me so late in the story anyway. I, I didn't really know, or quite honestly care. I wasn't a developer, so who gave a shit? And I don't know how these things worked. A level loading screen begun with Sonic, you know, screen colors. And then it came up. Lethal Labyrinth, first mission, escape from the M blank pursuit. The, the, the space loading, sorry. The space after the M represents a jumbled mess of symbols that, well, are assembled up, uh, you know, turns into military. I wasn't able to make out what it was supposed to say at the time, but it looked like the word monster. 
The lava was the same cement-like texture as last time, except everything was completely blocked in within it, so I couldn't see the background at all. There were two straight paths, one on Sonic's left and one on his right. I was wondering if he still had the bounce bracer from earlier, so I tried to bounce, and I was successful when Omo Chow came from nowhere and started flying around Sonic. A text box came up and said, you should not have used that item yet. The strange thing is that... It was the only unvoiced Omo Chow line that I ever seen. I thought this made sense though, because in the final build of the game, the player would n well, would know or not know if she should have done something yet. But I thought that maybe items carrying into wrong stages before being picked up could have been a problem in testing in the first place. And I guess they just never took the message out. At that point, the screen went black and I'd lost life. I saw this as the game telling me I should not bounce right now, and it did not matter much. The level had a really low ceiling anyway, and I'm the kind of person who, well, really isn't into all these kinds of mazes like the one on Lethal Labyrinth seemingly was. So I decided to keep on taking the right side path. Nothing unusual really happened. I thought maybe that this was originally going to be a labyrinth level and that if you kept sorry, that kept you from using your items. Maybe you just hadn't gotten well in due to being boring, or the time constraints or something. About the fourth or fifth time I, I, I took to the right side, for a split second, a sort of image popped up, but it was too quick to make out. Afterwards, an ear-piercing screech came from the computer and emulator. The emulator itself came well, down after about a minute of that. I couldn't really make out the image, but something inside me reminded me of a giant alligator at the end of the fourth level in Sonic Heroes. I knew it couldn't have been something like that, though. <clears throat> it, it wouldn't have existed yet, and... What would that alligator have to do with the labyrinth? Every time I tried to load the game on from that point, all the noises was just... You know, with Screech, I had to mute my computer to try to play it again without going deaf. I again selected the hero story, but this time I had no scene. It, 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 I just had a message telling me final. <sighs> final mission. That was the information on this stage screen. Apparently, this level loading was called final. There were no colors on the loading screen to indicate what character stage it was, and no mission number. And no mission description. I wondered if this was some kind of glitch loading after the final rush or final chase. When the level loaded, there were no characters. It was just some very, very small room. The room probably isn't the right word to describe it. It had six walls and a ceiling and a floor that was so low you could, you know, barely fit if you lay down. I had to tilt the camera around to make these observations. It took me a few minutes before I realized something. This was the inside of a coffin. It made sense now. It was the final place and at that point you'd be out of a mission. Soon after the screen went black with white center text in the middle. That planet as bloody and dead as him. My computer then shut down. I was shocked and scared. Clearly, those lines were, well, a reference, well, these lines were referenced to when the game had said, well, to what Sonic had said in the original game. Come on, let's go to the planet as cool and as blue as me. Was this a part of the game? Was this meant to be said by Eggman, now the big time villain? Had he killed everyone and had forced Sonic into that awful labyrinth? Was this Sonic's coffin? Those answers I would never get. My computer never turned on again, and I'd eventually bought a new one. Those nostalgic memories of Sonic 2 would never get over those horrid awful ones. I'm never playing this game again. Fuck it. I'm done. No more. I still had no idea if the alligator really was related to that split second image, or not. I didn't want to. I'm fucking done with Sonic Adventure 2. Fuck this. Maybe even all Sonic games. Please, there are fine cheat items that tells you you can access any kind of beta levels or test levels. Think twice before loading it up. 
All right, everyone. That was two crappy passes. To be honest, the second one was all right. It had some awkward writing, though, which made it pretty hard to understand, so to speak. It, it just seemed a little odd, and quite frankly, it just... I don't know. If the writing was better and more, quite honestly, fluent, it's really hard to tell with my pervasive development disorder. I'm not the best writer, but I can tell when something's hard to read and when something's not. It also tended to repeat lines that was in the story in the middle of sentences, which made it very hard to understand what in the hell was going on. Don't forget we got the cliches like not touching this game again emulation i don't know where i got the cheat codes or where i got this or that or i don't know where i found the thing and then you know the bloody coffin and uh, the only thing i really say would be a little bit more redeemable about the story is quite honestly the um amazing part where it used uh, bits of sound clips to recreate something and to be honest we all know in real life that well the voices are pretty much done before the production of the animation so they could get the lip sync right which means that if there were voices they probably had it before that the actual beta stages were made which means that you get the picture that, that, that those placeholder lines were obviously hacked, which would make the story a hundred times percent more believable, even with the character's narration being completely wrong. That was Sonic Adventure 2, the beta stages, which would be 3 out of 10 for me. Now, why don't we go on to a cringeworthy pasta called Sonic Cursed Adventure. Okay, so the guy's a dad finds a random ass game. It has a creepy ass message, continues to play it. The game's all fucked up, and he, for the longest time, he even believes that that's normal. You know, the game doesn't load up the other save, and he fucking. Uh, he, ha he brings in a daughter in on this, and apparently she died or went into a coma. The story doesn't explain that. It's overly graphic on the gore and blood, and it, the story is completely unbelievable. I mean, like, I could believe in a hacked cartridge with extremely disturbing elements, i.e. Ben Drowned. But to be honest, it basically steals the intro from the Squidward suicide and then slaps crappy freaking game generic plot right over that, which to be honest, I mean, like, at least it was readable. It, it was readable, don't get me wrong. I, I'll give credit where credit's due. And it, we can all here admit that it's not as bad as Missing No in 6th Gen. That piece of donkey shit. But in terms of crappy pastas goes, uh, the, the first story gets a 1 or, well, no, no, no. This first story gets a 2 because it's fluent. You can tell that there is, the offer is trying at least, but it, it would not get on Mr. Creepypasta's channel or some ordinary gamer's normal stuff. And I guess I would have to say is try to, uh, to create a really good gaming Creepypasta is, what you need to do is that you need to take a concept, alter it enough, and try to do a new twist that people don't see coming. Avoid that guy who fucking gives you, you know, that weird thing, you know, maybe a glitch happens, or you find a, you know, like, let's say you find in a dumpster, or something like that, or something new and unique, there's not really much you can do, but, you know, like, and it's like, don't fucking throw random ass supernatural elements, that's the whole reason why Sonic.exe doesn't work. And to be honest, the quite funny story is that Sonic.exe got removed off the wiki because it doesn't meet their quality standards. So ripping off that story is not going to get you anywhere. I would also see if you could avoid nostalgic licenses, but if you have to, at least try to put a twist that people don't see coming. Like that last story with the um, bits of dialogue changed out, which makes it seem more like a hacked cartridge. 
And the fact that that last story didn't have any, you know, fuck it, that last story gets four out of five. You know, you get a gold star, Jimmy. This has been your host, That Creepy Reading, signing off.